Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this episode, I'll demonstrate how you can set up Modbus TCP server on a VT scaler and connect that VT scaler Modbus TCP server to a PLC, which is going to be our Modbus TCP client. Just as a test, I've got the uh, scaler pack hooked up to the same network as this VT scaler server. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to ping the scaler pack, which has an IP address of 192.168.50. Dot one six. Yeah, it looks looks like uh, it's connected. It's got a solid ping. This ping test indicates that the Ethernet cable between uh, the VT scatter server and the scatter pack is good. So I'm gonna close this command prompt here. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna launch a VT scatter application manager, also known as VAM. The version of VT scatter I'm demonstrating is uh, version twelve. And once the VT scatter VAM has been uploaded. I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new application. I'm just going to create a new application called uh, mod bus TCP TCP uh, server demo and just going to click next. I'm going to leave everything as default, making sure that application is on C drive and all that good stuff. I'm going to hit finish. This is what the uh, initial screen looks like once it's all built. I made a mistake here, it's Modbus TCP, or TCO. Anyway, uh, the first uh, task at hand would be to create a port tag. So in order to ex ex get create a new port tag, you're going to click this icon here called Tag Browser. And in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder so that I can house everything in there. So the way you look at it is that assuming you have, a, say for example, a well pad and you have a PLC or a skater pack or RTU in it. So that's a similar thing what I'm going to create is we're going to right click here and create a new child and basically create a folder called a container and the context. This will create a nice little folder. Say, let's say I'm going to call it skater pack. Oh. Well pad, right? And the area, say I'm gonna give it, say, Chichi, or whichever you wanna call it, and say somewhere in, say Alberta. That's where I'm from. So here, the help search key, I'm gonna leave it blank. blank. Type, I'm gonna leave it blank. On the settings, leave it blank and display, because essentially we're just we're creating. Uh, what we can create is a folder. And from here, let's say this is a skater pack, uh, well pad, say well pad one or two or whatever you want to call it. Inside here, you'll create, like I said, the first thing you have to do is to create a port. So create new child and click on port here. And the port we're going to create will be of a TCP type. Okay, in here, you're going to give it a name. Let's call it uh, mod bus port, right? areas just gonna leave it as Chi Chi I'm gonna say Modbus uh, TCP port as a description this I'm gonna leave it blank now the connection is where you have to enter the IP address of your skater pack which is gonna be 192.168.50.16 that's the IP address we were trying to ping just now on from the command prompt so uh, the standard Modbus port number will be 502 I'm going to leave the de uh, disconnect delay as 30 seconds, which is the default. TLS, I'm not going to enable it. This is for, let's say if you want to create a secure connection, then you're going to have to do this, do this, and choose a certificate of whatever you want. But again, I'm not going to do that because this is just a test demo and my skater back is, like I said, literally sitting next to me. On a display, I'm just going to leave it as, as whatever they have, and I'm going to click OK. So what it's going to do is going to go ahead and create a Modbus port for you there with the IP address and all the good stuffs in there. So once that is done, next thing you're going to do is to create a driver. So on the same level as the Modbus port, you're going to right click here and create a new child. And now we're going to click on drivers and we're going to scroll all the way down here until you see a Modbus compatible device. Click on it. And now here, let's say we're going to call this a Modbus com channel. Just give it a name, whatever name you want it. Again, the area will be Chi Chi again. So over here as a description, let's call it a Modbus TCP com channel. Uh, to keep the tradition going, we're going to call it TCO. Okay, as a description. Anyway, um, so server this, we're going to leave it blank, help search key blank for now. 
options here. This is going to be a Modbus connection, so I'm going to click on Embedded. And let's say if you have a, a byte swap or bit swap, this is what you do uh, uh, to do all that reversing of your bits there. But for my PLC, I, I don't really need to do any swapping, so I'm just going to leave it as it is. Another thing that I like to manipulate here will be the store last output value, right? So it remembers the last values when you lose comms. You know, uh, it's a good thing, but some people don't really like it. They want to be aware that it has lost comms. So for now, I'm just going to leave it as unchecked. On the serial section here, this port missing section here, what you're going to have to do is to assign this port that you just created. Click on this icon here, and then click on the port that you just created, which is this one here, and make sure you hit select. What it does is it shows you that the, the the port that you just selected. The next thing on this section you're going to have to do would be the Modbus uh, slave address. My Modbus slave address on a skater pack is 8. Yours could be anywhere. So uh, the Modbus slave address ranges anywhere from 1 to 255, which is FF in hex. We're not using Modbus Plus. We're going to leave it as this. And virtual I.O. Again, we're going to leave it as default. Once that's done, click OK. Once you click OK, now you'll have two tags. One is a comms channel tag, which is your driver. Another one is your Modbus port. Let's keep the tradition going here. Let's call it a TCP, TCO port. Just keep the name consistent here. So next thing you want to do would be to create a digital tag, right? The digital tag and all the other tags will go under the comms channel. Go right click here new child click on all tags type here and you're going to scroll all the way down and look for ION calculation this one here click that and now let's say we're gonna map a digital or discrete tag which is either on or off and just say test discrete tag and over here we're gonna leave the help key search key as blank and this is going to be a discrete, as in digital. Discrete, uh, there's two different types of discrete. Actually, you know, there's four, uh, altogether four different combination, right? It's on off and on off on the other side. So it's going to be di digital. Okay, let's, let's change this to digital just to prevent confusion. So digital is either on or off, right? Equipment type, we'll leave it blank for now. Click on IO. Over here, you're going to enter the address of your coil, say, let's say, for example, three, which is uh, a Modbus address three, right? And then quality code, uh, you enter here manual data if you want to uh, force a value using VT Skater. We're going to leave it blank for now. Logging, alarming, and display, we're going to leave it as they are. Once that's done, click OK. And then once that's done, go back to your uh, well pad here and click on show children. If your Modbus communication is good, your value here will be showing as zero. Let me squeeze this a bit so they can see it. When you get a value of zero on your drivers or your comms channel, it means you got no problem. And your port, your value has to be zero. So this too will become visible once you map a tag any tag, a Modbus tag. Uh, now it's good, the comps are good, that's why the value is zero. So if you don't map any tags in here, you will not see any values. Just remember that, right? You, until the first tags have been mapped, then this value should be good. So this value should be zero for good, for a good connection. Let's say if I were to remove my Ethernet connection from the skater pack, this is where it looks like these two values. Keep an eye on these two guys here. As you can see, First of all, the COM port went off to 260 and the COM channel went to 531. So these are actually a fault code on your COMs. So I'm not gonna, now I'm gonna go ahead and connect the Ethernet cable to the skater pack again. And you can see that once the tag comes in here, all these are good. So I'm gonna toggle this on the skater pack here. This is Modbus address three. Go in there and I'm gonna turn it on you can see this value is changing to on you can turn it off on and off 
right you can on again if you like here we go so now that's how we map a digital value now if you want to read an analog value so on the same section uh, same uh, tree as a com channel you're going to right click here and click on new child and then go click on all tags type again and you're going to scroll down again and look for i o n calculation here click on that guy here let's going to call let's go, let's call this a test and a log tag yeah it can it could be the uh, uh, any of the ISA tag like uh, ISA 5-1 tags you know normally that's what people use on for actual process but this is just a test right so let's call this an analog it's just a description you can write a novel here not quite but you can look, write more descriptive stuff here so it, it means something to you but and this one here data type you're gonna call it of course analog as you can see once you select analog watch this menu here the, the menu changes here analog you can see the scaling uh, and IO looks a bit IO looks about similar I guess so anyway once you select analog let's go to IO this is where you map your address so uh, we're gonna read a 40,000 registers today let's read 40,000 which is your holding register and say 8 right I like 8 because it's a very isent symmetric symmetric number I guess anyway 40,000 and 8 this is your scanning interval right now it's scanning once every second just now uh, the discrete was also scanning once every second dead band is uh, you can set a dead band of say 2 so unless otherwise the value changes more than 2 that value will not be registered as change scanning interval and so on right uh, I'm not going to touch his, uh, history address and write address so let's say if you have to write address, uh, write a value from VT Skater to the PLC, this is where you will land the 40,008 in here. Uh, this this here, Privilege and Publish, is more for MQTT. Again, I'm not going to touch on this for now. So anyway, to read a 40,000 registers, you punch in an address here, whatever interval you like. Uh, this is the channel we're reading from. And let's go scaling. Scaling, this is your raw value or... Uh, a raw value that uh, the uh, uh, the uh, did the, there's a scalar pack or the device spits out let's say if your raw value is going from 0 to 32,000 right you'll type here 0 to 32,000 and let's say if you give me uh, say uh, a, a 10,000 and that gets scaled between 0 to 100 which is whatever it is uh, I think it's about uh, if I were to guess it would be 40 I guess so anyway, this does a linear interpolation if that means anything to you. But uh, yeah, scaling can be done that way. But if you want to, if you want to leave as they are and not scale it, you're gonna have to leave it as 0, 100, 0, 100. This will just take verbatim a linear, as in if the PLC was to speed out say 28, your output on the tag will be 28 as well. Quality, if you want to force a value, you put a value in here in manual logging alarm and display we're not going to touch it so we're going to hit apply here and you can see one tag comes in here right now the value on 40,008 is zero right now so if you if i were to go to the skater pack here on the telepace here and change the 40,008 to say uh, 88 accept you can see this value is changing to 88 so let's say I'm call it uh, 28. See the value is changing. I'm just going to change some random values, say 44. Um, you can see it's changing to 44 and 46. As you can see, actually, I'm reading uh, integer value. If you have to do a floating point conversion, you can definitely do it uh, on analog value. Uh, you just have to do a translation. Uh, but yeah, so this is a demonstration of reading uh, digital and analog. Uh, just it's a good demonstration. So if I go back to Scatter Pack, well here, so this is what the Scatter Pack should look like. Again, just to recap the summary, under good COM circumstances, your COM channel or your driver, the value must always return zero. Your COM port must always return zero. If I were to disconnect my Ethernet cable to Scatter Pack, this is what the value looks like. It looks kind of dodgy, right? Connect the Scatter Pack 
is not cabled back to the network with the VT scalar, it goes to zero. Well, I hope this uh, quick tip, or rather became a long tip, I guess, uh, helps you get gets your uh, Modbus TCP going. If it does, please subscribe and like. Other than that, you have an awesome day. Bye now.